Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now it's just dawned on me uh, recently that I haven't actually made a how-to guide for setting up Plex, uh, especially on uh, using Docker. So here's the video. Um, also just a real big shout out uh, to everyone just before I start the video on the amount of support I've been getting on the videos lately. Nearly reached 700 subscribers and for me uh, it's amazing. Uh, I wasn't really expecting anything for these videos. I've just been making them uh, because I'm interested in them and I'm just hoping that other people find the uh, videos helpful so it's nice to see the comments and stuff so thank you so much uh, enough of that though um, let's get into what you're here for and I will show you how to install Plex on a Raspberry Pi using docker so like all good uh, docker images uh, Linux server have a very good one um, the link in the, will be in the description for this uh, the reason I like using Linux server is because they support the ARM architecture for my Raspberry Pi so generally Linux server are a really good one to go to and the other reason for it is because they have a docker compose file let me just zoom in a bit so you can see so like all my docker videos what I do is I make a docker compose file and it's essentially you can just copy this fill it out run docker compose up on the file and it spins up a docker container it's so easy so I just follow along I'm going to now go into my Raspberry Pi uh, it's got a SSH connection um, you connect to any sort of service you're using or if you just want to watch that's fine just watch along otherwise you can follow along all you need to do is make sure you have docker installed i will have a link in the corner um, on where you can install docker or how you can install docker i should say so nice and easy we're working with a docker compose file today so all we need to do is copy all of this but first let's jump into our uh, linux server with docker installed and i'll just kind of show you um, a good layout of where you can set the file up and stuff so i'm actually on a freshly installed version of ubuntu on my raspberry pi so if i do an ls i've got actually nothing so a nice thing that i normally do is i just make a directory and i normally make a directory for each one of my containers right so i will go make directory and i'll call this plex I'll change directory in the Plex and now what I can do is I can make a docker-compose.yaml file so it's pretty straightforward all I have to do is go nano and I'll call this docker-compose.yaml enter and now I go back to the uh, Linux server web page and copy that docker compose file so it's just this stuff here so let's just copy that across nice and easy we paste there we go so now let's just have a quick review of this let me kind of just zoom in a little bit there we go now let me just start kind of from the top so as you can see here we're using the linux server version of the plex docker image that's fine the docker container name is going to be called plex again that's fine and it's going to use the host network again that's fine for us now there's a few environment variables generally we don't need to change any of this stuff so that's fine and the main things we're actually worried about is actually the volumes so if you've watched some of my other docker videos you will know that on the right hand side over here is the file directory within the docker container for which we don't need to really modify that the only thing we need to worry about is on the on this side um, here which is the path on our host server where we want um, our docker image to look for um, for where the you know the config will be where the TVs and the movies will be the reason it's nice to have this choice of where you can have your path is say if I actually you know on my Raspberry Pi I've got a little SD card but if I had a external hard drive with all this stuff on it I could point the movies to a folder on that external hard drive so I just change this path to like something to match where the external hard drive path is you know it's that easy otherwise if you want to keep it all on the SD card all we have to do is make um, a link to a path uh, where a library folder is, a TV series folder is, and a movies folder is. So what we need to do is quickly make those three. So now you can see here that I've actually made those three directories. So I have library, movies, and TV series. I'll just make this a little bit more bigger because it's quite small on my screen that I can see. Now, all I have to do now is just figure out what my working directory was. So as you can see here, the directory I need to put in was home, Ubuntu, Plex, and then the library movies TV series. So if I copy that, right, and I just go into nano and the docker compose file, and all I have to do is come down to these paths, pretty much just clean it up until the library and paste. And there we go so now i just need to do that for the remainder of these so there we go so now what we've got is that it's now pointing to my home my user the folder i made and the library folder that i made and now if i want to put uh, movies tv series and all of that stuff uh, that my plex can see 
all I need to do, I'll just save this, is go say into my movies folder and put movies in there and then that's what the docker container will look for for where my movies are. So for this to work, let me quickly get a movie in here or just something um, and I'll show you how Plex can see that. Right, so what I've done now is I've just quickly grabbed a small snippet of like a video clip that I had um, and I've just put it onto my Plex folder here in movies. Now what I can do is we can spin this up. So what I can do now is just do sudo docker compose up hyphen D. Now I've mentioned what this does a few times but let me just quickly mention this command again. So docker compose means that it's going to look for a docker compose file. It's saying that hey look there is a docker compose file that I want and it has the build instructions for you. Please use that when you're building the docker image. Up means create it. There's the equivalent of down which will destroy it. Um, and hyphen D means it will run in detached mode so I can end my connection to my uh, Linux machine and the docker container will still stay running. And I hit enter. Now it's pulling the Plex image. I haven't done this before, so it's going to do that. And it's just pulling it from the Linux server Docker uh, hub repository. Cool. So now it says it's done. So let's just test that. So we'll do sudo docker container ls hyphen a. And we can see here that we have our Linux server Plex, which is here, and it's been up for seven seconds. So now let's go back to Linux server and see what IP range it's running on, and then let's try connect to it. We could also probably find the IP range within that Docker Compose file, but let's just jump back to the Linux server documentation. So now what we can do is we can try connect to it on the port 32400. So this is the port that it runs on. So now let's just quickly type that into our browser and see what we get. So what it is is 32400 uh, 400, and what we need to do is actually type in um, web and hit enter. And now it will start to load up. And here we can see here, we get a general warning saying, hey, look, this isn't hosted by Plex, but that's fine because we're self-hosting. And so now what we need to do is actually just create an account. So I'll quickly log in. I'll probably just log in with um, my Google account. So I'll just quickly do that. All right, so I'm just logging in now. I'll just wait for it to wait to do its thing. Now, the first time that it's coming up, it might take a little while just to load because it's, you know, it's, everything's fresh. And there we go. So now we can see here that it says, you know, just some general stuff that it Plex scans your media automatically and organizes it and uh, cool that's all good we had got it and now this is the one thing is that plex does have like a um let me make this full screen plex does have like a paid subscription model sort of thing and that's why i like that jellyfin that i reviewed the other day uh well actually not the other day a few months ago uh, which is like the free completely open source vision of plex but that's fine if you're happy with you know not having these features that's fine um so we can close this stuff and that's fine give your server a friendly name to help identify it ah let's just call this ubuntu plex and um, you can allow this to be accessed outside your home, but I'm not going to. I'll keep this internal and hit next. Also, while this is loading, if you previously, if it was just sitting spinning um, in that previous screen when you first set it up, uh, just refresh it or open a new tab and try access URL again, um, and that will just kind of kick it into action. Cool. So here it says, please organize your media into libraries. You can add as many libraries as you want. So let's go add a library. Uh, let's just call this one uh, films. Next, browse for media folder. And now we know we had one. We had uh, movies and TV shows and stuff like that. So let's go into movies and we can see there's that video that I put in. Uh, so let's add that and we'll add that library. And uh, next, uh, so you can get this like on a phone as well um and link it so if you're at home you can link to your uh, plex server on your phone so you can be watching movies in bed or whatever on your phone um which is quite cool um uh, it would only work again if it's internal uh unless you had a vpn set up uh we'll hit done and just like that we are all done so you get all these like movie trailers and stuff like this but here is my little one here so i think if i come down um how do i find my library it's been a while since i've actually done any of this stuff on here um maybe movies and oh, films here it is here and this is my little video here um that i was trying to make a video before so this was my one here <laughs> um but it's just a video i made but again all you have to do again let me just quickly uh get rid of this full screen and now if i open up this so again if i change directory uh change directory ls and change directory into um the movies 
that's where that file was so you just add content into your movies or your tv series uh there's a whole bunch of optional folders you can make as well like uh, i think like music and stuff like that that is essentially how you get plex up and running um again just a real quick recap all we've done is we've installed it using docker compose we created those three directories one for config one for tv and movies and then you can um just copy any file you want into your docker uh, into those folders on your uh, linux machine and then when you run the docker compose up it's going to search for that stuff now when you want to add things later you can just add more into the folder and then come into uh, plex and make plex scan that folder again i think it's in settings and then i think under like library yeah you can have it so it scans your library automatically and stuff like that so that's pretty much how you get plex all sorted so i hope you really enjoyed the video please subscribe um, and like mainly because it's a great way for uh, my video to be recommended to others um and i'm also trying to hit that thousand thousand dollars a thousand um subscriber cap uh so yeah thank you so much um and i'll see you in the next video bye